If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Hello, I'm Christopher Acapinti. This is my friend Gabe. Uh, and today we're just going to be talking a little bit about Linux as normal. Now, Gabe here has been using, I mean, we probably, it's probably been a while since we've met. It's probably been like four years now, right? It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but four years. And about that time, you started using Linux here and there, right? Correct. Um, now, before that, you were primarily a Windows user. Correct. Did you ever use Linux before you met me? Very briefly. I think I tried some small distributions to uh, fix people's computers, to fix broken windows, to get data off of them. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, pre installation environments and whatnot. So, I was vaguely familiar, but not nearly as familiar as when I met you and you introduced me to more of the community aspect of it. So, now, uh, Besides the Linux use, before that, uh, kind of a hobby of yours, you, you, you help people with computers. It's Correct. not your full-time job, but you help people a lot. Um, and so, you, as you just said, you use Linux to troubleshoot some stuff, which is nice mm -hmm. having the, the live CDs to boot from. Um, since then, though, you've installed Linux on a couple of your machines, Correct. right? Correct. Uh, mainly Ubuntu? Uh, Ubuntu, Mint. I haven't dabbled in too much other than that. Yeah, I think at one point we, we tried crunch bang on one crunch of the machines bang. because mm -hmm. Ubuntu wasn't detecting the wireless drivers and Correct. I think we got, that was a couple of years ago. It was ago. an older yeah. laptop that we had trouble with the wireless. Which is just, so some distributions provide different wireless drivers. Sometimes it's a legal issue like with Ubuntu who tries to be a little more commercial and they're proprietary drivers so you're allowed to download them and install them but they're not necessarily allowed to distribute them. So Ubuntu has it where you can download them once you're connecting your internet, but you were still having issues with that with that particular version yes. of Ubuntu years ago. You had gotten it, you had got it to work for me. Yeah. Just I, with a, a little fiddling. Yeah, I think CrunchBang worked out of the box, and with right. Ubuntu I had to add something to a startup script. It was something simple once we found out what it was. Um, and currently, we were just over at your house a little bit ago. You were dual booting Windows 7 and Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Um, and I haven't used Ubuntu in years. It was one of the newer ones because it had the Unity interface Correct. with the, uh, I want to say Omnibar, but that's what... Google calls their bar. What what do they call the quick search bar? Oh, the HUD. HUD. The HUD. The human. Uh, no, the heads up display. Heads up. That's what it stands for. Um, and uh, you had just done an upgrade on that system. Correct. And you were having an issue with uh, uh, your internet was connecting, but you were using Chromium, which is not the same as Chrome. It's similar, but a little different, which we might talk about here in a minute. Um, it was crashing. It might load a page halfway and then crash. And uh, I said, before I look at it, let's do an upgrade. And then we just did uh, sudo apt-get, update, upgrade. And it had been a while it's since you did an terminal, update. Right. And that fixed the problem. So <laughs> it seemed that it fixed yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, a little bit we tested. It seemed to be working. We had some mm -hmm. HTML 3D stuff that we were looking at that was working fine. Definitely better than it was before. Yes. So definitely, uh, word of advice, whenever troubleshooting, make sure everything's up to date before going any further. Exactly. Um, yeah. Scrapping the whole install and having the redo it. Yeah. Now, you were saying that you had just upgraded Ubuntu. Um, I guess it has a feature now. That, uh, see, uh, back, I, I mainly use Debian uh, SID, which is their unstable. And it's it's uh, the, the, the stable version of Debian, I don't believe, is a rolling release. But the unstable is, um, which means it just basically continuously updates. There's not, I mean, there's checkpoints, right. you know. Um, so very rarely do I ever have to, and I've always, I've never liked upgrading from one operating system to another. I've always just like, well, if I need to upgrade, I'm just going to wipe everything out. Not just like a clean system. That's how I am. Different people are different ways. And back in the day with Ubuntu, there was a way to do an upgrade to a newer version, um, but you had to do some fiddling with it. Uh, but you made it sound like nowadays it's just kind of a click a button and it updates to a newer version. That's, I just saw the update was ready on my, on the screen and went with it. I knew there was one available. So I heard good things about the, the latest update. I think even today there's a later update. Uh, that is that I do not have that installed. Just to clarify, uh, this is the the previous one. Yeah, I'm not even the keeping exact number. I'm sorry. I don't the even keep track. Number. Yeah, no, they have the names and. Um, um, but but well, the, was, the, the version the version would for be an everyday simple. user it was extremely yeah. simple to follow the update process and then within what, 15 minutes it had a new version yeah. fully installed. The uh, the the. Each version of Ubuntu has its own code name or whatever they call it, like Wally Walrus or something like that, uh, which I can never remember. Um, but then they also have released versions, which is very simple. Do you know how, how they version numbers work with Ubuntu? 
It's actually one thing I actually really like about Ubuntu because oh. it tells you how old the, the, yes. the version is, is like if it's 10.4, they release twice a year okay. uh, in April and October. So the release version is going to be the year and then the month. So if it's 10.4, it was released in April of 2010. So yes, it's it's now the end of April. So there was probably a release earlier this month. Okay. And uh, the version you probably just updated to was probably the October, October. version. Um, so good and bad things. People will argue over whether having a steady release dates like that is good or bad. Does it rush you to where you don't do good things, or if you don't have release dates, do you just take forever to complete stuff? That's a matter of argument. As far as the version numbering like that, I like it because I can go, oh, this is four years old. I don't have to go, oh, when did version six of Debian come out? I just be like, oh, this is the year, this is the month. I know it's a year and six months old, you know? And if it's more than four years old, definitely time to upgrade. I mean, unless it's a long release. Um, uh, so so overall, you're you're enjoying Ubuntu? Yes. It, it, well, let me, let, me, let me say something else first. Like I said, you, you, you've always liked computers, but you find yourself more nowadays using your, your laptop less, and you're, you do most of your stuff on your phone, which is Android. Absolutely. So, so even though you've been using Ubuntu Nine, for a long 95% time... Ninety-five percent of my time is spent on my Android phone. Yeah. Rather than boot up my laptop. So even though you've had Linux installed for a lap, on your laptop for four years now, you're still kind of a beginner because you haven't really exactly. used it much. But overall, the, uh, the Unity interface with the, with the heads-up display, do you like that? Uh, I'm open to anything new, so yeah. it, it was easy to, to get a hold of. It's extremely user friendly. Um, it, for me, I liked it because it, it wasn't Windows. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, <laughs> you understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, for new users that know nothing but the Windows interface, I think that's why one reason they don't like or rejecting it, Windows 8, mm -hmm. 8.1 8 is trying to help that. Yeah, but they're so stuck in their ways, it's hard to get people. Yeah, which is true change. of humans in general, it's except for me. Nature. I like change. Exactly. I, I've always said every every couple of months I try a new uh, desktop environment. I'll go from KDE to GNOME to XFCE. There's a new one I'm trying. I can't even remember what it's called. I've been using it for like two weeks now on my desktop. Uh, I like the lightweight ones. I also like the heavy ones as long as it's a machine that can handle it. Um, one of the things I've always loved was I got Compiz. That's how I say it. I'm not, but the 3D interface. Mainly, I could care less about, I mean, wobbly windows is fun, but uh, for me, I really liked the scaling where I could just hit a key or move a mouse a certain way, and it brings all my windows down uh, to, on the screen, I click on the one I want to go to, because I'm a multitasker. I always have multiple, multiple things going at once, uh, and actually, it's actually probably been a year since I've had Compiz installed and had that feature, and now that I'm thinking about it, I think that when I go back inside, I'm going to reset up probably XFCE, because FXCE... Some, some window managers can't handle, some window managers are window managers and um, desktop environments, and some are desktop environments with a separate window manager, and so a comp is, is a window manager, so depending on whether you have a desktop environment that also is a window manager, or if they're separate, depends on whether you can use comp is or not. Hope that made some yes. sense. Um, so like, I, I don't think you use comp is with like Fluxbox or, or uh, ICE window manager, which is another lightweight one I like, um, but XFCE and I think LXDE are lighter weight ones that will allow Compiz, but at the same time, if you're going lightweight, why would you have Compiz installed is the argument. Uh, for me, it's just I like trying out different things. Um, so I like the scaling feature. For a while, I used uh, Awesome Window Manager, which is a tiling window manager. Awesome Window Manager. Have you yeah. heard of that? Um, Definitely read how to use it before you install it, because if you don't know how to use it, you're not going to be able to look up stuff on how to oh, use nice. it. Because you, because there's uh, basically you know no mouse to change windows. Everything's keys, and it's all tiling. Depending on what keys you hit, the windows are arranged a certain way on the screen. Yes. So there's no resizing or dragging. It's all done with keys. So if you don't want keys to hit, you don't know how to get to mm -hmm. your web browser to search for stuff. Um, so uh, basically, I, I want to wrap up this interview. Uh, but Gabe, we'll be back in future videos. Um, we were in the middle of talking about something, though. Maybe we should wrap it up. The I don't Android remember. Thing. Oh, the we'll get to Android stuff in the next video. So uh, we'll talk about more about Ubuntu, your experience with Ubuntu okay. and Android in the future. But I do want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for, for talking to all my viewers. And as always, please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.
your hands. <laughs>